need a, a chrome car bumper, oh, like an old metal car bumper. Where do you know where I might find that? Ah, uh, it's gonna be hard. This should be fine. Okay. This one right here underneath, that's a bumper. Might be a little rusty for you. It's para un concierto. Oh, sí. Como un instrumento de percusión. Eso. Eso. Está bien. Hay que afinarlo porque tampoco es así. <laughs> okay, está bien. Sí, está bien. Es una, una nota muy baja. <laughs> My name is Nathaniel Stuckey. I'm a composer. I do write music for orchestras and string quartets and that sort of thing. I also write music for bands and garbage. <laughs> There's a very long history of using junk, garbage in music. Lots of bands and, and composers have used found objects in the past. In the symphony orchestra, there's actually an instrument called the jawbone of an ass, which was a donkey's jawbone with teeth. Now it's like a metal instrument, but that kind of tells you that there's a long past of it. So this new festival, Direct Current, Mason Bates is the composer in residence and invited me to bring this piece that he heard out in California. Well, Nat Stuckey is a real visionary. I've known him many, many years in California. His piece, Junkestra, sounds like nothing else he's done, and most of his pieces don't sound like each other. Nat took the junk from San Francisco Dump and turned it into the most beautiful piece of gamelan. I had finished an orchestra piece and was looking around for something to do, and coincidentally, I went to the dump's website, my local dump, because I was trying to figure out whether or not you need to rinse out a yogurt tub before you put it in recycling. And I saw that our local dump, run by this company called Recology, actually has an artist in residence program. So I got this residency, which gave me a studio very near where all the trucks come in and dump their stuff. So I would go in, collect a few pipes, whatever seemed interesting, put it in my shopping cart, push it down the street. And then once I had all the pieces together, that's when I started trying to figure out what kind of music I could make for it because I didn't want to impose anything on the garbage. In other words, I didn't go in and say, I want to have a particular scale. I instead just wanted to listen to what was there and see what came out of it. A lot of the parts of Junkestra have to be shipped because there are particular sounds that if they were missing, the piece wouldn't sound like the piece. It would be like playing a an oboe part on a piano. So there it is, parts. And basically what I would do is go through the piles of garbage as these giant um, tractors are going through and pick stuff up and hit it. And if it sounded like that, then I kept it. So most of these things are basically percussion elements. The reason being that I, I didn't think that wind players would want to be blowing on anything from the dump. And this, along with a couple of other instruments, was actually rebuilt by Oliver DeChico, who's a, a San Francisco sculptor and instrument maker, into more solid, lasting instruments. These are the ones we most often use now because they've got a nice big surface. This is the, the original guy. That's the Godzilla phone. So everything in Junkestra is exactly as I found it. So for instance, if I found this piece of, of railing, I didn't cut it to a particular note. I just took it as it was and then listened to what that note was and tried to build a scale around what was actually there. Eventually, I started building these instruments, actually with my mom, who came down to the dump and hung out with me in the studio for a few days while we like, drilled holes in random things. So 
I have to have a lot of the parts, but the things that are replaceable, like shopping carts, uh, oil drums, there's certain really big things that it's actually easier and less expensive to find than to ship. So that's why you know I went around DC to try and track down those kind of things. What I'm looking for today are things that didn't have a specific pitch um, that I incorporate into the piece and that were too big to ship. For instance, like a shopping cart or a oil drum. I'm looking for Frank. Yes, sir. How you doing? Are you Frank? Yes, sir. Hey, Nathaniel. Hey, hey, nice to meet you. So, um... Hey, he bringing the shopping cart for you. Right over there. Oh, yeah, this is great. You got the shopping cart? Yeah. Only one we got. That's awesome. <laughs> that is so great. I didn't shake your hand, except now I got a oh, That's all good. It's all good. I got the first CD. <laughs> the original Junk History instruments were just, like, nails and rubber bands. The whole thing was pretty flimsy, uh, definitely not capable of traveling cross country. It sounded the same, um, but it was just a bunch of like pipes sticking out of old dressers. Beautiful light on it right now. So percussion is a very well-known percussion ensemble that I'd never worked with before. I just met them today for the first time. And when you're working with new people, you know, there's always a little bit of concern that if something goes wrong, then maybe the whole thing will go wrong. Dun, dun. Ah, okay, gotcha. Is that? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, okay. It's often surprising to people that I will stop rehearsals of Junkestra and say, you know, you're playing a wrong note uh, because it doesn't occur to people that there could be a wrong note, for instance, on shower hardware. This, I'm actually not sure is in your parts because I, I see it's not in this score. Do you have a piano in 92? Four. Yes. No. Yes. Ah, okay. That's how, oh, knew, yes. that's how we knew we weren't together. <laughs> We're doing a workshop today with John Bertels, who's a teaching artist at the Kennedy Center where I think people are going to be building their own instruments and in the later part I'm going to come in and make a composition with them. Composing is a little bit like cooking and since I don't know what any of these ingredients are, what I'm interested in first is getting to know a little bit about the sound of the ingredients and then we'll just kind of take from there. Nice. Uh, there are a lot of things about the instruments that make it challenging to get a, a sound that is satisfying. This has a real one-man band <laughs> quality. I, I like it. <laughs> so the next couple of days we have more rehearsals which will be kind of refining. I guess there are maybe three more rehearsals and then we do the show. <laughs> 